So, I've got a scenario for you. You've been following for the past year our tiny basic computers project here on Wi-Fi Sheep. You've bought all the parts, you've assembled your kit computer, but when it came to actually trying to upload the free hex ROMs onto your Arduino Nanos or AppMega 328P microcontroller chips, every time it has failed. You've tried a new cable, you've even switched to another computer, and it still doesn't work. Does that sound familiar to you? If so, the problem is bootloaders. And in this video, I have a solution for you. This video series is funded in part by our kind backers on Patreon. Join today from just $3 per month and gain access to exclusive video and project related downloadable content. Visit patreon.com slash wifi sheep. Links are in the description to this video. Hello there and welcome back to Tiny Basic Computers, easy build project from youtube.com forward slash wifi sheep with me, Tom. Before we go any further, I just want to tell you about our channel sponsor. If you're looking for turnkey PCB assembly services, then look no further than our partners at PCBGoGo.com. Services include PCB manufacturing and assembly, component sourcing, functional testing, and IC programming. PCB GoGo manufacturing bases are equipped with the most advanced production equipment such as Yamaha pick and place machines, reflow oven, wave soldering machines, x-ray and AOI testing machines, all operated by highly skilled and trained personnel. PCB GoGo is the leading specialist in surface mount and through hole mixed technology and turnkey electronic PCB assembly. PCB GoGo provides easy and cost effective online ordering services. So join today. Sign up for your free account at PCBGoGo.com. More details and an affiliate link from Wi Fi Sheep is in the description for this video. So, bootloaders, what are they? What do they do? And why are they causing a problem? Well, the problem stems from that the hex files, these are the pre-compiled files that we give you for free to upload to your Arduino Nanos or clone Arduino Nanos, require the modern version of the bootware firmware. This is a little program that basically boots up when you power up an Arduino and goes and looks for the serial comms port before trying to execute the code preloaded onto the Nanos. Now, this code changed from the original Arduinos that had an early version and then they changed it to the later version of the bootloaders. When you buy clone Arduino boards, which I encourage you to still do, a lot of them will claim they've got the new bootloader installed and most times this is correct. However, I have bought clone Nano boards which look identical to the ones that do have the current bootloader on and they either have the old bootloader or worse of all, they don't actually have a bootloader installed at all. Hence, whatever you try and do at the Windows or the PC side, you'll never be able to upload the hex files to these bootloaderless or incorrect version, bootloaded versions of the Nano boards. So today I'm going to run through a relatively quick way to rectify this and install new bootloader firmware onto any Arduino Nano or AppMega 328P microcontroller. So we have our uh, old or failed bootloader nano here. Uh, what we need to make sure is that it does actually have a populated header or six pin header on the rear of the device. If I just show you this one here. This was used in an earlier video uh, I did on modern 8 bit computers. Very successful video here on the channel. You can uh, watch it, it's in the link in the description, it's on screen right now. Uh, basically, this one I actually uh, manually soldered the uh, pin headers onto the board, but at that time I didn't think I'd need to put the header on the top, um, which was a mistake. So this one will need header attached here to these six pins in order to allow this one to have its bootloader updated. Uh, this one here is perfectly fine, so we've got the six pins that we need, and as I stress, you do need these pins in place for this to work. Now, as always, there's more than one way to get a bootloader 
onto a nano. And some ways are better than others. So the first method is requires another working Arduino board. I find it's best to use Unos. You can use another Nano, but the Uno has the advantage that it has pin headers that you can push pins into without needing to put this into a breadboard. You can use this version of Clone Uno, which has the uh, Atmega 328P surface mount package chip, or you can use the more official one, uh, which has the separate chip. Now this one I've added this Ziv socket to. If you're going to use the official Arduino um, Uno boards, then do make sure you've actually got a working Atmega 328P microcontroller chip, which will either go into the chip socket or in this case into the Ziv. Again, if you want to know about why we modded this, there's a video about that uh, linked and it should be on the screen now. I'm not going to use this board. I'll use this one is a little more convenient. So this will be our boot flasher or uploader. So in order for this to work, we need to mount this one and get it off and running with the PC. So I have here standard USB A to B cable. So I plug one end in there and the other end obviously goes to the PC. Okay, so plug it into the PC. I have Arduino IDE environment already running and we want to first of all make sure we've selected the correct COM port, COM port 4 and that we've got the correct board which is an UNO. We then want to go to files, examples and it should be here listed as 11 Arduino ISP and they'll give you this sketch. Again making sure that you're on the correct COM port correct board. We now click to upload and we want to upload this sketch to the Arduino Uno. And you'll see it should start flashing or have the boot. Uh, so the load LED should be on as we compile and upload this sketch to the Uno. There we go, that's been done successfully. So we'll just unplug and now we need to wire the Uno up to the Nano that we want to flash the bootloader to. To do this we're going to use male to female GPIO jumper pins so that has a pin on one end and a socket on the other. There's a fantastic diagram for this which I'll put a link to on the official Arduino website under the support of how exactly to do what I'm doing and has a fantastic pictorial diagram it should be on the screen now. So basically you want to find pin 10 which you probably can't see in the light but it's just there and it's between 10 and 13 that we want to put four cables in like so and now we want to connect the other end to the corresponding pins Admittedly, the colour I've got different coloured wires to what's on the diagram, which can lead to things being a little bit confusing. But basically, it's pin 10 wants to go to bottom left. Pin 11, which in my case is brown, is going to middle right. Pin 12, which is red for me, and pin 12 is going to top left. And finally, pin 13, which should be orange in this case, is going to go middle left. This can get a little bit fiddly, but that should now be wired up correctly. And you can just double check to make sure you've got everything in the right place. And finally for this we want to add 5 volts power so we can power up the nano board. So I have another jumper here. Again, same configuration of male to female. Male side we want to go from 5 volts. Which again, trying to do this on camera is always a little bit tricky. And we want the neighbouring ground. Um, very important to get these the correct way around. And 5 volts is going to go on the top right pin. Uh, 
and ground is on the remaining pin which is the bottom right pin. So all six pins should be populated. As long as you've got the power to correct way around, it doesn't particularly matter. It won't work, but it won't break anything if these are in the wrong place. But hopefully that's now correct. So we should now be able to power from our PC, put the USB lead back in. And you see that both now power up. And back to our Arduino IDE environment. And if we go tools, so make sure you've selected programmer as Arduino as ISP, which is this one here. And there's an option at the bottom here for burn bootloader. We're going to burn bootloader. And you know, it says, now says done burning bootloader. So hopefully that has now updated this board. You can also use this exactly the same method if you have, for example, an AppMega 328p microcontroller chip that hasn't got a bootloader on. And you can actually piggyback two Arduino Unos together because they also have this six pin uh, header on them. And you can use that to flash a troublesome Uno or if you have an Uno with the separate chips, you can actually use it as a flasher to write bootloaders to standalone at Mega 328p microcontrollers. As always, thank you so much for your company. If you haven't done already, please do remember to like and subscribe to us right here on Wi-Fi Sheep. And I will see you real soon right here on the channel. Until next time, bye for now.